So you want to be a correctional officer. Well, in this video, I'll share with you five things that you really need to know before pursuing a career in corrections. But first, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> I don't have any sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So you want to be a correctional officer. You want to join the hundreds of thousands of brave men and women who selflessly serve their respective communities with professionalism, dignity, and honor. But before you commit, before you slip on those brand new pair of boots, before you pin on that badge, there are a couple of things that you need to know. And I'm sure you've looked into this particular profession. Maybe you have a relative that works in corrections, or maybe you majored in criminal justice in college. But despite your level of planning, despite your preparation, there are some things you need to know. Number one, you have no idea what you're getting into. It doesn't matter what you think you know about this profession until you are alone in that day room, until that door shuts behind you, until you are walking the yard or walking that top tier by yourself, you have no idea what you're getting into. And you could binge watch every episode of Lock Up Raw or Oz or Orange is the New Black. I haven't even really watched that. I did watch Oz in the 90s and it was it was pretty influential in my life. You can research and you can Google and you can ask around, but until you lace up those boots, until you meet Adebisi in person, you have no idea how and if you're going to be able to handle this environment. Look, take whatever college course you wanna take, listen to whatever professor you wanna to listen to, but you can't learn to do this job in a classroom. You can't learn to do this job by reading a textbook. Now, I'm not downplaying the importance of formal education because I believe that knowledge and information is imperative to our survival, right? We need to understand things like addiction. We need to know the signs of depression, right? But what I'm saying is that a textbook won't threaten to kill your family. A textbook won't try to stab you. You're going to meet people on the inside that you didn't even know existed. Drunks and delinquents, pedophiles with PhDs, murderers and manic depressives all sitting around a marred up stainless steel table watching Jaws on AMC for the third time this week. You're going to need to communicate with these people that you normally wouldn't communicate with on the outside. You're going to have to motivate a population of people that don't want to be motivated by you. You will need to treat them with a level of respect that is counterintuitive to the way that you actually want to treat them. So let me ask you a question. Can you maintain your poise? Can you control your fear? Can you harness your anger? Can you keep a straight face when you want to laugh? Can you laugh when you want to cry? Maybe you can, but maybe you can't. The fun part is, I don't know, and neither do you. Number two. The second thing that you really need to know before pursuing a career in corrections is that nobody cares about correctional officers. Okay, maybe I said that just to get your attention. Did it work? Look, if you're a certificate of recognition person or a participation trophy person, you're going to be a little disappointed with what I'm about to say. See, the majority of what we do behind the walls and the wire of a correctional facility go unnoticed to the general public. Stay at home Susie Homemaker and her insurance selling husband Joe Bag of Donuts have no clue of what we do on the outside and probably honestly don't give a fuck. That's because the majority of what we do as correctional officers is considered proactive management. What does that mean? It means that we forecast, that we see the potential for a problem or danger and we act accordingly to try to prevent it, to try to stop it from manifesting itself. We make extra rounds. We separate or isolate individuals from each other. We gather intelligence. We stop it before it even happens. And most of the time, we don't even know what it is. So here's the fun part. Nobody will ever thank you for the nothing that never happened because there is no way of tracking nothing. Nobody is ever going to come up and shake your hand. Oh, wait, we're not supposed to shake hands anymore. But what do we do? We bump or I don't know. Nobody is ever going to come up and give you an air high five and you're never going to get officer of the month for all of the things that you prevented because they never, ever happen. So not only will you not get that satisfaction, that recognition inside while you're wearing your uniform, the public is unaware of what you do and so you won't get that satisfaction or that recognition outside of your uniform either, outside in the public. You're not going to get your discount coffee at the gas station. You're not going to get a law enforcement discount at your local burger shop. Number three, working in corrections is incredibly dangerous. 
As a correctional officer, you will be asked to patrol the most dangerous neighborhood in your respective community. Everyone that you will encounter has been accused of or convicted of a crime by society, by a jury of their peers. Inside, there are no little old ladies that need help crossing the street. There are no little kids in their front yards waving at you as you drive by. Every day, somewhere in the world, somewhere in our country, somewhere in our community, a correctional officer is getting punched or kicked or grabbed or gassed or stabbed. So not only do you have to learn to protect yourself from physical attacks, from the tangible danger, but you also have to learn to protect yourself emotionally, protect your mental health and, and beware of the emotional damage of the psychological dangers that you will be faced with on a daily basis every time you walk into that building. I know what I said doesn't make sense to you if you're just starting out, if you're just thinking about pursuing a career in corrections, but check it out. Spend 30 seconds on Google and research correctional officer burnout, correctional officer divorce rate, correctional officer suicide. The statistics are staggering. But just like there are techniques to protect yourself, to defend yourself from the physical danger, there are also techniques and ways to prevent that psychological damage, that emotional danger that I talked about. Number four, it's not that the veteran staff don't trust you, they just don't trust you. Look, we are one gigantic dysfunctional brotherhood. And until you prove yourself to veteran staff, until they get to know you, they're not going to trust you. This has very little to do with you and a lot to do with them. See, those salty old vets, they've been through a lot together. They have responded to medical emergencies. They have broken up fights. They have been outnumbered and understaffed for years. They have missed anniversaries and birthdays and important family events. They don't have time to exercise and they've been overeating for years. They don't like that you're happy and that you're positive and that your uniform actually fits the way it's supposed to. It's hard for them to get to know you right away because they have watched numerous officers come and go and all that they know is that they are mandated for another shift. They have to work another double shift again. The good news is it is possible to earn their trust. Just be patient with them. Show them a little kindness, a little empathy. Watch them. Learn from them. The good and the bad. You can learn something from everybody you can encounter. And I promise you, eventually, they will welcome you with open arms. Number five, corrections is not just a stepping stone into law enforcement, but it should be. When I talk to a group of people, when I stand in front of a group of aspiring officers, I always ask them, why corrections? What brought you to this wonderful world of corrections? And a lot of the times their answer is, they feel that corrections is a stepping stone into law enforcement. And while I sort of agree with that statement, I really don't like it. See, corrections is a very noble career. It's not just a job. It's not just something that we do passing through, but it's a very honorable profession. See, it's inside of a correctional facility. It's inside of that locked housing unit, outside in that yard where you really learn to communicate with people. You have nothing to protect yourself except your ability to communicate your ability to de-escalate, a set of keys and a radio. And what that forces you to do is to build those connections, is to find that common ground, to actually have a conversation, to be able to motivate those people that don't want to be motivated by you, that don't want to listen to you. Look, the bottom line is if you start your career with an open mind, if you walk into this with the right frame of mind, if you take these survival techniques that we will show you, that we will teach you seriously, you'll have a long and fulfilling career. Because that's what corrections is, a career. It's not a job. It's not a stepping stone. It's a very commendable, very dangerous, very thankless profession. If you like this video, if you found value in this video, please please press that little like button right, right there. Leave me a comment and then share this video with a friend, somebody you think might be interested by the things that I've had to say today. And if you're hungry, if you want to consume more content about corrections with a focus on fighting the emotional trauma and psychological dangers that officers encounter on the inside, please subscribe and make sure you swing by my Facebook page. I'll post the link below. Every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, I host a live show with a focus on the mental health and emotional well-being of correctional officers where I host guests 
and we tackle topics like trauma and the toll that it takes on an officer's mental health and emotional well-being. All right, guys, that's all for now. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon.